Dystopia tonight. Tonight. Uh, she's one of my really good friends. We've done a bunch of stand up together. Her, uh, it's Camilla Clee. She's a comedian, actress, model, hilarious person, and uh, Bernie Mac's daughter, as she puts it. So let's bring her on. <laughs> I feel like I now just took her. <laughs> she's laughing already. I feel like I just took that uh, joke away from you, but I think it's hilarious. Well, it's funny. You actually just reminded me of it because it's been a while. Oh, good. Um, since it was I one of my, I, you, that was the, that was like one of the first times we ever met and you did that. It was like a nice pause. And then you're like, I know what everybody's wondering. Yes, I'm Bernie Mac's daughter. And but, I just thought yeah, it was hilarious. People always set it up super awkward. Like I have to say who my dad is and like, right. you know, I love my dad. Don't get me wrong. But like, um, sure. it's kind of an awkward thing to bring up. Like, yourself you know it's it's not yeah. really my favorite so i like to to make a joke out of it and um but sometimes i'll do it on like radio where there's no video feed and the joke doesn't play quite so well because you're like <laughs> right 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 because nobody can <laughs> like see I, you it's not quite <laughs> as obvious that um we're not related I right. Guess. <laughs> right yeah <laughs> and on radio it's a little a little more awkward when nobody can see you they're like oh how sweet her dad passed yeah and <laughs> i didn't even know yeah. he had another daughter uh, how you doing? Well, they, actually, they most people don't know that my dad has kids, so oh. they know he has cats. Uh, yeah, that he, he does post about his shows. cats. <laughs> he does, <laughs> and he posts about them a lot, which is nice. Makes me feel less. Yeah, weird. it's great. You know, one of them. Um, this is a few years ago, but he took it on a talk show, and by the time the talk show was over, the cat had more Twitter followers than I did. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, I'm losing at nepotism to a fucking cat. Like, oh my god! Can I swear, by the way? Yeah, you can yeah. do whatever you want on here. Nobody cares. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, is it. it too echoey, too? By the way, because the it's like super high ceilings here. No, no, no. We get it. You have a very nice house. Uh, no, no, no. My dad runs <laughs> <like>, one. <laughs> no, 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 no. You slept on my couch. My, my I know I have. Bad, but this is not my place. <laughs> no, I know. I was going to say, I don't recognize. Yeah, you're still in, you're in Arizona, right? Uh, I am. I'm in uh, Phoenix. Yeah. I, I just realized I just probably, what, I'm not supposed to say where you are. And then you're like, no, I'm in Phoenix. Fuck it. Well, no, um, I'm in Scottsdale, but I didn't realize no. they're like basically the same thing. Yeah, they are. Here. Yeah. It's all sort of. I used to live in Scottsdale. I, I find it really confusing to find my way around here, which yeah. I actually, I know I'm a woman, but I do generally have a decent sense of direction. So like, it's, right. <laughs> it's kind of a strange layout or something. I don't know. Yeah. No, Arizona is really confusing. Like place. There's no real good landmarks in Arizona. It's like a few gas stations, miles of desert, and then a random giant mall area. <laughs> the, well, there's you know, they just, yeah, that's right. There, there is. Yeah. They're, but oh. they're they're not great to use as landmarks because they're no. everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a somebody just said it's a dry heat. Your dad is the goat of comedy. Nice to get to know you. By the way, we're on Twitch, so like people can comment and, oh, okay. uh, and in real time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh, uh, my dad will love to hear that he's a goat because I'm sure he has no idea what that is. But <laughs> to him, like just the animal goat, that would be um, <laughs> even that, better. That would be. Can you tell one of the cats and have the cat relay the message to your dad and like? <laughs> I feel like they have that relationship. Uh, yeah, they're they're a little closer for sure. <laughs> You're making me picture him like uh, De Niro's character in Meet the Fockers, like Jinx, <laughs> where the um, cat takes priority over everybody. That's pretty great. <laughs> oh no, that like not one cat, four cats take priority over everybody. Like <laughs> when I was a kid, we had like I think at one point sixteen, and um, and. All well, fifty percent of his children are allergic. So if that gives you an idea of the hierarchy, yeah, <laughs> like, one of the cats kid might die from an allergic reaction. If you have like one of them, one of my brothers is severely allergic. Um, I just am a little bit allergic, but like, okay. yeah, sixteen is a, a great way to be like. We're gonna make sure that you react to this. Like, there's no way you're avoiding that standard. You know? 
<laughs> one of those cats, I don't know which one it is, but it's like the same height as you and your dad. Like, you're really tall. And so is your yeah. dad too. But one of those oh, cats monsters. is like, I don't even understand how it's possible. It's a gigantic, whatever. I think you posted the picture recently. Or he something. has a, a main, well, he has three main coons and they okay. are like, when they jump off a table, it's like, boom, boom. Like they're, oh. <laughs> the whole house shakes. They're like, one of them I think is um, 28 pounds. Holy shit. Hercules yeah. weighs seven and a half, my dog, which you've, you've met him like just to give you a scale yeah. that's uh what four times that so yeah yeah i i can imagine your dog is like scared shitless of those cats um <laughs> yeah it's they're but they're very sweet they're just like you don't want to play with them because it's kind of like having a little tiger you know like, <laughs> they don't mean to hurt you but they certainly could Somebody said he, uh, Polly Chase said he and Rowan Atkinson are a voice of reason in today's PC world. Uh oh. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's true. I hope so. I yeah. mean, that or he's trying to get himself canceled on a daily basis on Twitter. <laughs> I feel like he is, and I love it every single minute of it. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, that's because you're not the one doing damage control. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he did say something like one day. The influx. Oh, God. He, he said something one day, and I literally thought, if Camilla sees this, she's going to lose her goddamn mind. Like, it, like, It was probably like I walked in to his room and was like, hey, Dad, don't tweet this. And then I walked out, and he tweeted it. And <laughs> so, yeah, I am probably glad I didn't see it. because This um, is why he draws all over your computer and shit. Oh, did I tell you that? Yeah. There, yeah. It's still on here, by the way. And he was like, I'll, I, I'll get you a new computer and I needed one anyway. And I'm like, I could try hard to get this permanent. He drew all over my computer screen with a Sharpie because he's a grown up, obviously. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I didn't try super hard to get it off because I need a new laptop. But like, <laughs> 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 so far, no new laptop. Um, uh, I, might, I might actually paint his screen, though, just to make a point. You, know? you guys should. I would love see now that should be on TV. You guys are doing a movie out there, right? That's why you're out in Arizona. Or you're working um, on a movie. A couple. Well, we came out to do a rewrite on um, a film that a couple of friends like. Do you know Monty Franklin? Comic yes. Australian. Yeah. yeah, Monty's great. So he wrote this film with Rob Schneider, and I knew when I told my dad the title, he was going to be like, "Yes, I'll do it." And I was like, "But oh, read nice. it first, like you know, right. be normal, because uh, it's actually based on." <laughs> a true historical event. It's called the Great Emu War. Apparently, uh, mm -hmm. the Australians went to war with emus and lost, which is kind of <laughs> epic. But um, this is true. Yeah. yeah I, I, I've it. never heard of that before. That's hilarious. No, I hadn't before. Um, before the that, other I had all. ostriches. Ostriches? <laughs> No, I'm only kidding. He said the other like <laughs> emus and He's making shit very up. Close. They, yeah. they are, and we actually used to have a pet emu. His name was Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she loved that. So, well, I guess her mom actually, I think, was on a talk show and said my dad had said something on the same talk show about her looking like an emu, and I want to say that she may have agreed, but I don't want to get her in trouble, so. That's fucking um, hilarious. Like a very beautiful emu, sure. Yeah, sure. my AirPods in, because. With a crazy ass uh, product line, Goop and all that other shit. She's, I, yeah. I, she's, it, she seems like a chill person, but also I don't know if I could get behind the whole, like shoving a beehive in your vagina thing. You know what I mean? Like that seems like a stretch. <laughs> Is that how they made that candle? Uh, yeah, no, I, thank you. Yeah, I, I, think, I did see, I've seen some very odd things that she suggested to put in your vagina. I have not seen Beehive. Um, uh, yeah, but, I may have thrown that in there for the hell of okay. it, but it's something along those lines, right? I wouldn't be like shocked. Money? I mean, shit. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, uh, man, that's no. that's so called that's... pandemic action right there. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's a nice way to get it off. Um, so are you, this is a good segue, by the way. Uh, are you, <laughs> you're doing, you're like super busy though. That Like, I didn't think like every time I see you on like Instagram or whatever, you're fucking crushing it. You're doing stand up. you're writing, you're on like everybody's podcast, by the way. So thanks for coming on here too. But like, you're just, are you like more you're busy like now than you were beforehand? Now. Yeah, I know. Same here. Well, and no, it's crazy that it's been this long since I've talked to you, but. I know it is crazy. Like I, I think 
when I came out to Arizona and the clubs were open, like I just couldn't stop saying yes because I was like right. um really just excited to get back to work and like be busy. I mean, I've been I've literally been sitting in my place in California by myself for like four months or something Jesus. absurd. Uh, yeah. It was so locked down and I was being extra careful because I knew at some point I was going to have to meet up with my dad and he's 81 and diabetic. So like right. I wanted to make sure <clears throat> I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to be any risk to him whenever I did meet up with him. Um, and, you know, no real stand up. The Zoom shows, I, I, I started to be a little bit more selective about which I did because that's like masochism yeah. at its finest a lot of times. <laughs> um, and it's like, oh, I so miss doing stand up. I'm going to go, you know, get that rush again. And then you're like, you leave just feeling like, or you don't leave because you're in your house, but you know, it's over and you're like, I'm just not funny anymore. Yeah. Um, so being out here, I got excited. And then I realized I was like way over committed, <laughs> but well, that, it's, was, um, it's sort of it, evening out now. Cause we have a bunch of projects we're working on. We're done with the emu war one, but Rob's okay. shooting another movie out here, which my dad's actually filming today. And then I have, Oh, nice. I'm playing a pilot, which I didn't know they had female pilots. I, I mean, <laughs> it, I guess I did. Is but it Amelia I really Earhart? Thought about it. <laughs> I, I already made that joke. You're playing one that doesn't come back, so it's as, fine. As long as I, yeah, as long as I have a navigator, we should be good. Um, yeah, <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, it's sort of like females in stand-up. Like most people don't know they exist, but they're there right. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and you will represent them all. Thank you. I, I'm big enough to certainly. I mean, physically, not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People don't realize how tall you are and they don't realize how short I am. And I think when we're together, it's a nice perspective. We do a really good job of like amplifying that. Um, yes. Like there's no one that has ever, but what's funny is I've never, I think it's so much about how you carry yourself. And like, I'd never really noticed how short you were like until I went to hug you and I'm six foot one <laughs> and you're, what are you like? Five, six, five, five, yeah, five, four. I'll take really? five, five or five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, your hair is phenomenal. So you can always use that like <laughs> extra volume. For the it does give me a couple extra inches. Yeah. I thought she was going to uh, say she didn't realize how big you were until you took off your heels, John. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I am. Uh, I'm we're quite the odd couple, but I think there's, there's probably like some degree of bonding that goes on when you're like in that extreme height category and like the the issues that we have um yeah dealt with because of that i think yeah it's always it's it's always kind of crazy because people do bring it up way more than i think you or i ever do or did especially when we're like like doing stand-up or on stage whoever whatever assholes on before us always has to like either lower or like rate like to some ridiculous height and you're like dude just fucking leave the mic where it is yeah like, i'm an adult i'll figure it out from there <laughs> like we're special at like they're trying to assist us like i'll get this for you i know it's hard to like, yeah like we don't know it. how to operate a mic stand at this point in our career like right. thanks guys really yeah exactly it. but i think um it is it's funny like i used to just walk on stage and stand there for a minute and be like Six one because I knew what everyone was <laughs> thinking and it would just get a laugh automatically. But yeah, on, in two different, I don't normally do competitions, but every once in a while, in two different competitions, uh, the Greg Wilson went right after me. Do you know? Oh, yeah, you know, Greg, you yeah, guys? yeah, okay. So, and he's a fucking great comic, way yeah. stronger than I am. Like, I, I don't. I don't dispute the fact that he deserved to do better than me, but it set him up so beautifully to walk on stage and be like five, three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and it, the joke would just crush. And then right. from there on, like he would go on to do his bit. And like, I think he won both times. And I was yeah. like, just credit with me and assist at least, you know, <laughs> he, did, he didn't even need it. I'm like, why are you doing competition? Credit you with me. <laughs> like, you've been doing this for way too long. Like, God damn it. Oh, man. Somebody had had a question before, too, but that's it. Uh, was there a time you hated comedy given where you come from? I never hated. I mean, I've always loved comedy. I think there's a lot of bad comedy out there. And I don't, I, I don't know if I'd say 
well, maybe I hate it. I don't know. Uh, yeah. it sometimes the business side angry. of it is frustrating. Yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes you watch a show and you're like, how the fuck did this get picked up? Like, it's oh, like, yeah, yeah. who are these people making decisions? Um, <laughs> I never thought I would go into comedy because I, I was like didn't want to be in the shadow and I've seen all the sort of downsides of like don't get me wrong like I I realize how lucky I am and there are mm -hmm. upsides but like having a dad that's a famous comic um I not a stand-up I'd like to just make that very clear right yeah not never did stand, stand up <laughs> thank <laughs> fucking god it's like the one <laughs> thing I have sacred but um he you know I just didn't want that life and then um i started writing like I, I wrote one project with him and really enjoyed it and then i i interned like the the last half of the last season of will and grace because i got uh -huh. my dad a job on it um this is actually nice. kind of a funny story like i was about 17 and i was riding horses professionally like show jumping and we oh, were yeah. at some cop a competition in Lake Placid and Jimmy Burrow or James Burroughs, who's mm -hmm. one of the best comedy directors of all time, television, yeah. especially wise. I, I don't know if he's ever done movies, but he not only, I think, created, executive produced and directed all of Cheers, like some of Frasier, uh, yeah. Will and Grace. Friends. Like he, I don't think he's ever had a bad show on right. TV basically. Um, and his stepdaughter wrote, and I used to sometimes keep an eye on her. She was a little younger. Uh, the fact that anyone paid me to keep an eye on anyone back then is frightening. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, drug money. Like, <laughs> <what are> we? <laughs> I, mean, I, I was not a good child. But uh, I marched up to Jimmy at one of the horse shows. And at that point, I had no concept of what a big deal he was. Like, he was just right. my friend Paris's dad. And I was like, Jimmy. I need you to get my dad a job. I need a new <laughs> horse. And look, like he's doing vacuum cleaner <laughs> infomercials, which he was at the time. I remember and those. The yeah, the company went, they went bankrupt shortly after. And I was like, Ugh. and I was totally kidding, but he, it mm -hmm. just so happened. He was like, oh, well, we're actually looking for someone to play Mini Driver's dad. And I was like, well, what a coincidence. Wow. English, <laughs> English. <laughs> I don't, they don't really look alike, but they could. I don't. Yeah, know, whatever. fuck it. And then he got that job, and then I somehow finagled an internship out of it. But like sitting in that writer's room, I was like, oh my god! Like they roll in at like eleven a.m. Like a job where you don't have to work, wake up early, and like right. you basically sit around and you talk shit and read tabloids and then make fun of each other and do a little writing. You know, I was like, this is my <laughs> this is do my little home writing. right here. Um, <laughs> So yeah, never, never hated it. I just was kind of intimidated. And the shadow thing is still a bit of a battle because I do work with him a lot, which I enjoy, but then mm -hmm. it's like, I can't really blame people that they assume if something is co-written by John and Camilla Cleese that, you right. know, I did the typing and the coffee and he did everything else. Cause like, <laughs> <laughs> he was. They don't know how nominated. much you write though. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't think I even did at first, you know, mm. I don't think I anticipated that I would contribute that much, but I guess 35 years of him or God, 36 years of him, like beating um, a comedy education yeah. into me <laughs> paid yeah. off because we have a very similar, like we work incredibly well together. I think especially, you know, not all father, daughter, or, you know, parent, child, Right. Relationships go well when you try to work together. So, yeah. Um, when I, that's, was, that's another thing I was going to say too. You guys do work really well together. And when I got to hang out with you and your dad at the, uh, what was it? It was in Brooklyn, right? The King's Theater. King's um, Theater. Oh, yeah. That, that was a fun show. Yeah. That was, was a blast. Fun. But you guys work well. To, I mean, seeing you guys live on stage together and, you know, doing the QA stuff. I mean, it was, it was great. And, and also like hanging out with you backstage. You guys do really work well together. So that's awesome. No. Thanks. I mean, it is nice. Like when I'm interviewing him, it makes him like his life a lot easier, which I think he deserves at this point in his career. Yeah. But like, because I know all his material and I may or may not have written like half of it. Yeah. Um, even, even though I'm taking the audience questions and I, I legitimately am, I'm picking the right questions to ask to, to produce the most comedy out of it, you know? Right. 
um, yeah. like that you wouldn't believe. I remember going through those cards people. backstage. There, some of those oh, questions guys, were pretty. We were running behind, and you guys. We were, were running behind. Like, <laughs> well, because I get distracted easily, and I have like six friends backstage, and we're mm -hmm. just shooting the shit. And suddenly, I'm like, oh my god, I have ten minutes before I have to go on. And yeah. there's two and a half thousand people there, so you get anywhere from like four hundred to maybe seven or eight hundred questions a night. And it's like I have about fifty minutes to go through those. Yeah. <laughs> and so you were like, I can you help me run through a few of these? And I was like, a few? Yeah. And then you literally like there was a fucking basket yeah. <laughs> from like the <laughs> audience. And I mean, the, we do tend to get similar questions every night. And it's interesting mm -hmm. to see which cities have like the most um, intellectual or most original questions versus mm -hmm. some cities you go to where you would think like, oh, this will be a really intelligent crowd. And then we get like 150 that are just like, will you do the silly walk? And I'm like, can you see? <laughs> like, <laughs> no. <laughs> like he's, he's 81 and he's had three of his major joints replaced. Yeah. Like, I don't think that's gonna happen. Oh my god! Yeah, um, that's fucking. That's great. Did you guys get to do any virtual ones though? I mean, it must have been like you. Like, did you? I think I saw one that you did. I know maybe I didn't. Maybe it wasn't a virtual one. Was um, it? Or this coming up, right? I suck at this. What, oh, is, it, what is it that you do? Oh, you you have one coming I, I up, I think, right? Well, he and Rob Schneider did one together through Rush Ticks that I just had to be like. I, I just did all the fun stuff, like the grunt work and the setting up 3,000 cables awesome. that they shipped out to. Oh, uh, okay. It was, yeah. Um, but I did ask them some questions at the end, but from off camera, because I was like, if I'm not getting paid, I'm not showering for this. So <laughs> <laughs> That's the new um, normal. Yeah. Well, so we had that one, and then we're actually doing a couple of live shows just at smaller venues, because the big places aren't open yeah. so we're gonna do um do you know rick bronson yes so he's a good friend of mine so we're doing his uh house of comedy yeah that's a, I was the, I did that a few it's years a great ago. room it's really so nice room. it's a great setup you can always tell when when the clubs are um they're run by comics or set up by comics because they they get certain things that just like business people yeah. wouldn't get like in the layout of the room like the way they run the show it's all excellent really great one show. of the one of the things he definitely got was that uh i thought it was gonna be my last time working there at this point uh because i had done you know i do the fucking trump stuff at the end of the set and it's like they're like three innocuous jokes or whatever i do them at the end and then, uh, but there was somebody in the audience that got fucking pissed and apparently wanted to, like, he was like a, an ex Marine. I don't even know. Like wanted to mm. fucking murder me, but I had no clue. There's like, that's you know how not, big that fucking, great. yeah, no, but you know how big that room is. You know what I mean? There's like, there's like, it's, it's fucking filled to the brim. It's huge. And, uh, it's and so bad. I get off stage, I go do, you know, whatever. And I'm going to leave. And he's like, just wait here. <laughs> he's like don't leave <laughs> and i was just like Ooh. i'm like what do you mean he's like why is it just don't oh hercules what's up buddy oh you're okay baby he was upstairs and i i don't know if you guys heard that door slam I yeah, think yeah. The wind. Oh. uh but he's like he's so funny he with fireworks and um like gunshots he's been fine but mm -hmm. like a door slams from the wind and it's like like, can you see him shaking? He's so yes. sad. You also oh, said baby. the gunshot thing so casually, like with fireworks and gunshots that distant happen ones. in Scottsdale. It's not, it's not like I take him to a gun range or something. No, I know, but even distant ones, you're in fucking Scottsdale. <laughs> I know. I know they used to have drive-bys, but oh, look at him. He's, He's so shaking funny. so bad. He is. Say hi to Johnny. Hey, buddy. Mm. <laughs> you're okay, little man. Uh, do you want to be interviewed groomed. he he just got groomed so um he's feeling very naked right now because he likes to decorate say. himself with like leaves and twigs and um he's been I having do the a same blast thing. out here <laughs> yeah, right. That's you, what could, this hair is. you could with your hair like his hair's they didn't they said they weren't gonna cut it but i feel like they might have because you know what his hair normally looks i was gonna like. say he's normally like, got like a little hope mohawk a little thing going mohawk on and, yeah oh you're okay little guy i am sorry you're so you're so scared come here oh the cats will protect him <laughs> the cats are here <laughs> thank god you're okay, <laughs> baby. Um, um yeah but that's a great room either way yeah it 
sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. My my child was was crying. Yeah, no, I totally understand. Look at him. He's adorable. Below a certain size, you can't really tell <laughs> it. We're not sure he is a dog. Like I, I've actually told people walking on the street that he's a pog, which is, and then I say, oh no, it's just a, a dog crossed with a pig. And um, <laughs> like, you wouldn't believe the number of grown adults that uh, th like, believe me. They just, oh, yeah. okay. I've, been, no, I've never like, heard no. of that before. I'm like, yeah, just Google it. And then I walk away. Um, <laughs> you but, know what they uh, have Google plug, right, Judd? You're okay, buddy. You're like, yeah, just go to lemonparty.org and you'll be able to find out all you need about these dogs. Uh, you know, don't go I, to that. <laughs> I would never, never in a million years would I have thought I'd have a little dog. But he just, I saw his picture and I was like, what is that? Like, How long have you had him now? Um, He's five now, which is okay. crazy. But I got him when he was two pounds. Someone had thrown him out a second story window. Holy shit. Was, yeah, so fucked up. Like, how do you do that to something so cute? And, like a baby, I could understand. Um, <laughs> you might have thought he was a superhero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's where he got the the name, I think, Hercules. But it, it did seem like a sign because they'd already named him that at the rescue. And I saw his picture and I was like, what is that? Is that even a dog? And I was like, that's my dog though. Cause I love yeah. him. He's so weird. And then uh, I saw his name was Hercules and we always, um, yeah, I know people <laughs> are fucking sick. Like yeah. it's just, it's horrible, but he turned out, he was fine. But, uh, Oh, I guess someone asked how that happened. Um, it, I guess there was a couple that got in a fight and I think the one of them was throwing the other's like belongings out the window and then the other one took the dog and threw it out. <laughs> Holy yeah, it was, shit. I got the police report and everything though. Like I, it was totally legit and he can't turn right. So I don't, my brother's a vet and he says he doesn't think it's related, like, but no, he, he gets be around just Zoolander. fine. Yeah, exactly. He's not yes, an Andy Turner. Um, <laughs> oh my but God. otherwise, he has been just the best little dog. I think you had to puppy sit one week, didn't you? I did. When, when I was I gone, yeah. you stayed at my place. Yeah, you and were I, gone. Oh, Kathy was there too, my my roommate. But uh, I, yeah. I think John did not appreciate how cuddly he is in bed. Oh my God. <laughs> and every time, like, he was, it was, I, I would always like, he, it would always start with him like not too close to me, and I'd wake up with him on my neck. Yeah, he <laughs> like, does have a and I'm just like, why am I sweating? What the fuck is going on right now? Yeah, he likes to spoon heads. Like he'll just wrap yeah. himself, which which is sweet, but it also makes your you know because all the heat that evaporates from your head, I guess, like it then doesn't, and you wake up yeah. feeling like you're wearing like a one of those Russian fur. Winter and for such a tiny dog, I could hear him coming no matter where, what room I was in in your house. Like if I was yeah. in, like if I would wake up and I'd be like, oh, I don't want to wake him. Like, so I'd do whatever. I could just hear him coming down the stairs, coming back up. There's like following me everywhere I went. I had to take oh. your uh, roommate Cassie's dog out at the time because she had that dog that she didn't wind up keeping, did she? Well, they they found him a home that was better suited for him because okay. so she got him with her ex boyfriend who it was his idea to get the dog and then when they broke up he was like you take it you know right. like, I think was she that the broke country up with singer him. dude or was that the no 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 she they're still they're uh, still together, together. okay but that's what I thought I, actually I haven't talked to her in a little bit but I I assume so um, this was another actor that she dated hmm. it was between Delia and, and her boyfriend now, but, um, right. But like, where are you going, bud? You can't. <laughs> you <see him> my <laughs> cat does that shit all the time though. Walks right in front of the, <laughs> it's, always, it's not a zoom call. If you're not, if their pets are not walking around though. I know. It's well, not he like doesn't normally, I mean, he's like trembling still. He gets so scared. But, um, yeah, she had that dog and she was like, would you mind also taking was, it for a walk? Oh, he, that dog was, I, look, I love animals, and I've I did when we lived on the ranch. Like I used to rescue a lot of abused dogs, and I'm very patient, and like would try to get them to trust people again and work with them. And yeah, because my whole life I've been surrounded by animals. I love animals way better than humans, you know. Totally. But this dog, I have to say, might have been the most trying animal. Like he was sweet, but he was just 
like a maniac. Like a I, maniac. I know she had to keep him locked <laughs> in the room. First of all, my first clue should have been that she had to keep him locked in the room. And then, I mean, well, he was he was harmless, completely harmless. He didn't but like, mean any harm, but schizo. he was just—he was like an energy vampire and a dog. Like you, yeah. Um, <laughs> Like if you were in a room, he would be like flying all over the place and then he would come and he'd sit on your lap and you're trying to type on your computer. Like he just never stopped. And we just, I think ultimately she decided that it it was, he was better suited to someone that had a big yard that wasn't working all the time, you know? Right. So I think it worked out for the best. It was a really hard decision for her. Yeah, um, it was just, he wound up being a sweet dog in the end, but getting him to trust me to get like, it wasn't like she didn't like tell me that he wasn't good. Like she was like, hey, would you mind taking him for a walk? I was like, no problem. And then I took yeah. Kirk first because I was like, let me just get Hercules out of the way. And then I went to go get the other dog. What was his name? I don't even remember. Um, uh, Jarvis. I'm going to call him Jarvis. That's right. And I like opened the, do the door to the bedroom that he was in. And he like fucking tornado whipped the room like three times, dove under the bed. And I was just like, and I had the leash. So I was like, oh, I was just excited to go out. No, this dog would not fucking come like come for me at all. I had to like leave the door open and like kind of pretend like fake him out that I wasn't gonna be there. It was it took me like two hours to get him to go for a walk. And then when oh, I did I'm not surprised. Yeah. I mean he God, I, I feel bad even saying anything because I I do he was a sweet, sweet boy. He just needed a lot of exercise and and yeah due to where we lived and the scheduling and stuff, it just is <laughs> It was wasn't fair to like her ex had a yard and stuff too, which was the fucked up part. It was right. like, anywho, I know he's he's got a great home now and he's happy, but That's not good. everyone not everyone can uh, be Hercules, you know. His yeah, no. dog is great. Like I know you may not love him sharing your pillow, but no, yeah, no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, he was he was a great he was a great. He's companion. like the easiest. Yeah, aside Super from the whole not being able to turn right thing but fortunately three left work you know right. it's just it's a little longer <laughs> it um, takes a little, little longer to get to him to get places when he's driving but it's fine but it's it's also nice to be able to bring him on the road like he goes on the tour bus he goes to yeah. dates everywhere like i can bring him on stage some nights when i don't have someone to watch him i just put him on the stool and he just sits there <laughs> like throughout the, <laughs> the performance and then uh it's it's great like it's free laughs when i do the show with my dad because he'll just come out on stage like the first time it happened was an accident but um i my dad was talking about like death something really morbid yeah yeah but like death his closer um, yeah and he'd gone a little off track and i was trying to figure out a way to bring him back um but <laughs> At one point, the whole audience, you know, two and a half, three thousand people start going, oh, and laughing. And I'm, I knew exactly that there was only one answer for how that was happening. But my dad right. did not catch on and was really confused, and, which made it even funnier. And then sure enough, Herc was like sitting under his chair. Um, but when we realized it was like free laughs, we just used to let him run amok backstage. And when he wanted to come on, he came and made an appearance and then he left and it's pretty pretty funny Aww. you're a good boy huh that's hilarious <laughs> so what are you you're, you have a gig tonight right um i think i'm gonna just do drop in down at this uh i haven't done this show before but it's i think an outside show everything's still mm -hmm. socially distanced yeah, yeah. but that's mm -hmm. good i'm glad people are being you know careful ish no, yeah like, not like fucking <laughs> california the yeah <laughs> have you been to the comedy spot yet down there the comedy spot it's in Tucson, I think. It's a great, great room. It's kind of far, I guess, from where you are, but it's a great fucking room. Um, I I'll have, let me write that down actually. Yeah, yeah. I um I've been doing a couple of the clubs here a bunch, but then like Rob was going to connect for me with a couple of the other ones, and that hasn't happened yet. And, yeah, uh, uh, that's you know typical just try it. <laughs> but i'd like to be doing more more stand up especially like my dad yeah. leaves in a week or two and rick was kind enough to say that i could stay at his guest house oh, that's um because awesome. i really honestly like it's been such a blessing to be out of la like i i have no desire to go back there any sooner than i have to unless things are opening up and things are kind of like would you um, ever permanently leave LA like everybody else did? I mean, everybody else has been going to Texas. Everyone else is gone. 
Yeah, everybody um, else did. They bailed. Colorado, Austin. Um, some people went to Nashville. They just pieced out. Yeah, I, it's crazy how many left. Like I opened for Steve Byrne a lot, and um, yeah, he he went to Nashville, which kind of broke my heart. Just how miss working with him on a more regular basis because he's such a great guy. But uh, Jimmy Schubert moved to Florida. A bunch of people went to Florida too. I was like, what? Do you guys hate yourselves? Like, why? Yeah, no, you- Florida is a fucking <laughs> miserable. I, I know people I, did I abandon. Guess- so I somehow like I'd always felt like there wasn't a lot of stand up work in Florida, but right now apparently there's a ton. So I, yeah, you just have um, to live through it <laughs> to be able to do the set, right? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think they just hit like two million fucking cases there now. It's actually in Scottsdale. The uh, sorry, the comedy spots in Scottsdale, so it should be right around like wherever the hell you are. Um, wait, wait, where in Scott? It's actually the in Scottsdale. comedy spots in Scottsdale. Yeah. Comedy yeah. spot in Scottsdale. It's a great room. Huh. It's su- It's like the Do perfect you know comedy room. Oh, I'll I... talk about that later. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Really I was going to say, I, <laughs> we do we do shit like that on here all the time. This, this, is, yeah. this, is, uh, this is all dead air now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now we're just booking gigs. We're like, have you been to this room yet? Um, <laughs> this club should pay me and give me free air time for them free air time. Yeah. Um, this will be tonight brought to you by the comedy stop in Scottsdale, Arizona. <laughs> The comedy spot, but <laughs> it's comedy yeah, it's spot. Got comedy there. spot. Yeah, I love com- your accent, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he, Tom, this is Tom, by the way. Is my producer? I, don't oh, know. I think you guys met on the telethon that we all tried to do. Yeah, or we all did, yeah. but you know that was fun. That um, I that day was kind of a an interesting one. I don't know if I ever told you what had gone on prior to that because I wasn't going to tell you on the podcast. Or on this podcast. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Can we do it on this one? You're You're like, I have a great story. I will not tell you here, though. Yeah, I I love doing that. It's my favorite. It's an incredible thing, but not 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 for. um, Yeah. She's like, but I will tell you on my podcast. (laughs) I. um, I do not have one anymore. well, I never really did. Like, I, I was brought on as a co-host for a few different podcasts, which is a great way to be because it meant yeah. I had, like, no no responsibility, really. And I just had to right. show up and be a dick yeah, yeah. for, like, an Honestly, hour. Honestly, I don't have any responsibility on this one either, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, having a producer is amazing. I just, I'm not good at all that technological stuff. And, like, how, I don't know. I just, with everything else going on, it would be a lot of, um a lot to learn you know yeah, yeah. no it would it's a pain in the <laughs> end i mean it's it is a lot so we're both learning at the same time when we're doing this yeah yeah i i yeah. should learn all that stuff but um and my dad and i talked about doing one together the problem is then when he leaves town like how am i gonna teach him to do it like remotely because right oh he's not um, gonna he, he'll just he's not gonna do that <laughs> you have we'll no really talk idea. more about this, but I feel like I could teach you how to do what we do. All the guests are always, you know, send them the link, they tune in with us, and then yeah. just, you know, have a good time for an hour and then go back about, you know, go back about the day. Yeah. I think I, one of my issues, I think, would be though, that, like, for, well, I think I know why too, but I hate asking like people to do things, you know, come on. And it, it's not even like it's a favor. Like I'm having fun catching up with friends. Like it's yeah. not a big deal. I think because I get like literally probably an average of five to 10 messages a day through my social media where people are trying to get things from my dad, which mm. uh-huh. first of all, I want to be like, you think this is the way to go about it? Like <laughs> <laughs> you think sending your his daughter who you've never met like a facebook message asking right if you'll star in your web series like that's yeah that's the professional okay okay um <laughs> somebody had once asked me i don't even i won't even say who it was but they had a um uh like a phone number for somebody to do like a, well I mean, it was before <laughs> i even had a podcast oh my god i love that his ears are just in the middle of the camera he's like I'm listening. Go on. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> what just happened? Can you hear me? Okay. He just walked up onto the computer and hit a bunch of buttons. So I don't know. Oh. <laughs> um, somebody, yeah. Somebody's like, uh, I've got his wife's number. Why don't you give her a call and see if yeah. he'll do this? And I was like, I'm fucking calling his wife. <laughs> Are you out I of your mind? Of, 
<laughs> I admire the people that have the balls to do that, but I'm so right. afraid of being that person that's out of line at the same time because right. like when people ask stuff like, you know, will your dad start in my web series? I, I kind of want to be like, I, I mean, do you think he's going to like, what's your budget? Like, will you fly him out from the UK first class, put him up at the four seasons and, right. um, and then pay him on top of that? Or like, do you think it's so good that he's going to fly himself out to do like, <laughs> I just kind of can't figure it out. Um, yeah. I'm like, look, the, the reality is if I had a web series, I don't even think he'd do that. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> and I can't blame him. Like he's 81. He's been working like yeah. 361 days a year for the past 50 years. Like he deserves yeah. to have a little, chill time you know but you could, be, you could be like i think one of the cats might do it if that's fine i don't know yeah they're uh, they're a close second i mean they they think like him they have the, at least four or five years of comedy education from him um <laughs> not not great at typing but <laughs> right so i think polly's asking a bunch of good questions he's asking about like how he wants to know more about like how you got here and like what like your whole process was like did you do like private schooling did you go into like did you do acting school or did you just come onto the comedy scene like more organically um that's a good question well i was at ucsb i graduated in high school at 16 i i turned pro rode horses did that whole thing until I'd broken one too many bones. And my dad was like, Oh no, I wasn't kidding. You are going to university. Um, oh, wow. So I took three years off before I went and I started at UCSB at 19. And then um, I kind of couldn't figure out what to study. Cause like most universities I've heard a few places have it now, but like, I didn't really know I wanted to do comedy yet. So I started in chemical engineering. You can laugh. It's fine. Wow. Um, <laughs> <and> then, <laughs> And then I was in economics. I think by the time I left, I was in art. <laughs> oh, wow. But, uh, I, I, I have a lot of interests, but none of them were things I could really see myself, um, you know, like making a career out of, per se. Right. So yeah. I, um, I left to go, I think the first time to go look after my mom when she was sick. And then my dad was writing a stage show and asked if I wanted to write it with him. And I kind of thought, I would, you know, like I said before, make the coffee and type because he can't do that. But, mm -hmm. um, but then, uh, how did I get from engineering to art? Because engineering was a lot of work. <laughs> 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 I mean, it was. I also realized quite quickly I wasn't gonna. I wasn't. It is super far apart. But I, I have a weird, um, like, because I grew up. My dad's actually super academic, even though he's a creative. Like he. I think secretly wishes he was an academic and my mom was a, uh, an artist, like a visual artist. So I mm -hmm. grew up drawing and painting. So like when I realized that certain things weren't going to work out, it just, I, I kept dropping down to what was less painful and less work. Basically. It finally but got then, to the stand up comic. Yeah, <laughs> well, Just kept going when, down the ladder until you're like, mm, all right. When I realized I was going to do comedy, I was like, why, why would I go back when, you know, I'm very fortunate to have someone that is probably the best teacher you could have to write comedy, you yeah. know, in my family. Um, and at, actually not just him, like, you know, my, my brother-in-law, well now ex-brother-in-law, but they're still friends, my sister and him. Um, Mm -hmm. He wrote Men in Black and B Bill right. and Ted's, all those movies. Like oh, he's wow. an incredible, like probably a more successful screenwriter than my dad. And I had another ex stepbrother-in-law. I know it's weird. You know, I'll let that <laughs> take in for a minute. It's a long history. No <laughs> like judgment. he wrote for the wrote for the Daily Show. Everyone's either a comic or a lawyer. I don't know. Oh wow! <laughs> kind of an interesting. Um, Ed Zitron? Did you mean Ed Solomon? That's my brother-in-law. Um, but uh, I didn't see what he did. But I he see does that make it. It's somewhat sad to say. <laughs> what, what would was, be the least What was work? the least work as far as a major? I, I think university? maybe more like what was more naturally what you adapted to more naturally than the least well, work. I, I feel like that's really color really color or like be in a lab, you know? So yeah, yeah. I think. Honestly, I never really, I got to this point with university where 
Um, so for high school, because I was competing so much, like I homeschooled for a year and that's why I was able to graduate at 16 because I've always been better at figuring things out myself and kind of teaching myself than I have been to like listening to people telling me what to do. Shocking, I know, for a stand up. Uh, <laughs> but like, I just kind of realized that, um, God, he is not calming down. Baby, you're okay. <laughs> I can hear him panting. He's like gripping me. onto me for their life. Um, it's, it's Tom. Tom's a little excited. <laughs> it's, he's been in quarantine uh, for a while. But I, yeah, because I hadn't really found anything. I was also still kind of reeling from the loss of like what I'd been doing my whole life and thought I was going to do my whole life, which is ride professionally. And when that right. was, wasn't an option, I got a little bit lost and got in some trouble, did a lot of drugs. That was the other sort of. Yeah, you just celebrated 11 years, right? Um, 14. 14, oh, holy shit. shit. Oh, wow. No, in April, it'll be 14 years. And, yeah. Okay. Of sobriety, but like, you know, it's weird when you do something and it's your entire life and then suddenly it's gone. It's like, what's that saying? Idle hands are the devil's workshop. Like, yeah, it, it's true. I mean, I've been on a horse six and a half days a week from like, you know, 4 a.m. to 7 p.m. Doesn't give you a lot of time to get in trouble. <laughs> right. Um, but suddenly yeah. I had all this free time. And also, like, my whole identity was wrapped up in doing that. So it was like, who am I without this? You know? Mm -hmm. um, thank you. I'm glad. I, I love that as a girl, like, you see you look healthy as, and you think that means you're fat, which I know I'm not fat, by the way. But <laughs> I was going to say like, what? It's one of those. It's what. Well, it's one of those words, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like jolly. Like, mm -hmm. you don't say jolly to mean happy anymore. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, right, right, right. I don't know. It's, I don't, I didn't take it that way for the record, whoever commented what, that. What, Thank you. I, what jettisoned I you I into the stand up route, though, as opposed to just oh. the, like, because you, you were like doing a lot of writing, but then you just let, was it the distance between your father's career, like, because he'd never done stand up, or did you grow up around a lot of stand ups? Um, didn't grow up around a lot because my dad doesn't hang out with, or at least doesn't have a lot of close friends that are stand up or mm -hmm. sorry, uh, in the industry, but, mm -hmm. um, it was a couple of things. One that I was getting frustrated because like, I think, and it, look, it's a fair assessment to make that a lot of kids that are kids of celebrities, like are getting everything handed to them by their parents, because that often is the case in this case, it wasn't, but I felt like any success I had, was being attributed to him, which was a little bit frustrating. So I thought like, oh, this could be a way for me to um, establish my own credibility as a separate entity from him and kind of get away from him. It hasn't worked that great clearly, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the, what actually like was the, the sort of final push, um, well, there were two things I, I wrote I was writing for him for the 2011 JF Bell Gala at the Sydney Opera House, which was oh, dope. Wow. And the the gala that we were that we were writing for, he was hosting it, and um, it was like Dylan Moran, who I don't know if you guys know him, but he's an no. Irish. Check him out, Irish comic, fucking hilarious. Okay. <laughs> uh, it was Louis C.K., Margaret Cho. Wow. Dimitri Martin, um, Will Anderson, great, great Australian comic. If you don't, if you haven't seen him, um, basically like all the top. Oh, and Russell Howard, who's a great oh. English comic. So, mm -hmm. uh, do you know Russell? Yeah, uh, yeah, he's funny. So, yeah, he's hilarious. Watching that like kind of gave me the bug, and I remember one night we went out to dinner with Dylan, and he was like, oh you're funny, just fucking do it and stop talking about it. <laughs> I was like, oh, thanks, Dylan. And then about a year later, I was um, I was in a sketch group with Sarah Tiana. You guys yep. know Sarah. Oh, or she's you, hilarious. You know yeah, she's, she's, she's fucking hilarious. She's really funny. If, you, yeah. if anyone watching this doesn't know her, definitely check her out because yeah, she's, she's one of my favorite females. She wrote models. for uh, Spade's new show before it got on Comedy Central. She wrote didn't for she? Spade's new show. She's, she wrote for... Um, who was the one josh wolf had a show before that she's oh, written for yeah. the roast she's written for jeff ross a ton she's right. a, she was on roast battle and, and she crushed, crushed on roast battle she's, she's fucking so good she's a that. monster she she's southern and she 
definitely dials up the southern charm when she's yeah. doing those things but she like has this really sweet southern accent and mm-hmm. then says the most fucked up things you can possibly imagine and there's yeah. something about it coming from that voice that makes it um that makes it so <laughs> yeah it <laughs> so is it's perfect tender. good but combination she's a great great joke writer and when i so i was in a sketch group with her and i went to see her do stand up one night and i it was the first time that like actually this may have no, it was after Jamble, but it was kind of the first time that I realized that like I really could do it because it, it was the first time I'd seen someone who I was friends with and could like relate to. Right. Um, like this may sound bad, but like so many of the female comics, especially back then, like were or the well-known ones were kind of these cartoon characters, like not cartoon kid, but they were very like character like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know what you mean. Yeah. And it, I guess it just never really felt like a real option somehow, if that right. makes sense. So when I saw her and she was really funny, she also wasn't dirty and I'm not like a dirt, I don't like doing sexual material. And she was very dark, which I love dark stuff, but I was like, oh, like I could, I should try this. And then it took me like another year to get the guts to actually try it for the first time. And then nice. I uh, did and, and uh, it ruined my life. And here I am. Uh, <laughs> so no, I actually, I, I like, I like this life a lot better, but it certainly is um, not what I expected. Yeah. It's, and, but I was going to say before, cause you were, you were kind of uh, uh, doing the self deprecating thing, but you've established yourself like pretty like decently on the scene over there, like out there and stuff like that. So you've got, I think you've got a good distance away from, you know, like uh, what your dad does and stuff. But I, I like to think so. I mean, I think the thing that has given me the most validation probably is just earning some of the other comics respect, especially the ones that I look yeah. up to, you know, like when I've heard them sort of having my back with stuff other people have said, like that means a lot to me because, mm-hmm. you know, as a comic, I know this shouldn't be my attitude. Hey, sorry, I'm talking to my dog, but this is getting a little <laughs> bit much. And he keeps putting his foot down my shirt and then like pulls it down. Um, You'll get us banned off of Twitch. I know, no nips on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, no. it's okay. It's, they would be hard to find anyway. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, earn when you start to earn that sort of mutual respect with some of the people that you look up to, like that's yeah. that's been enough validation to deal with all the shit that. It, people say online, you know, all the people that don't know me that are like, oh, she just gets this because she's John Cleese's daughter, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, um, I, I, I never thought that when I met <laughs> you. So it was just like, you were you were crushing it on your own when you were out there. Well, thank you. That's why it's so much fun to work with you too, because it's just like, it's a solid, you know, it's going to be a solid show. Oh, yeah. And there's nothing like when you know the lineup is just killer and like yeah. everyone enjoy it. Um, it's It's always a good feeling. For we sure. bonded because we were on a show that was not that great. And we just sat in the back of the room shitting on everyone. Did we? I, <laughs> I forget where we first. Like, Flappers. We first? Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> of course. I should have guessed nice... that just from the description. Yeah, I know. It's a great club. And they've, they've yeah. been really good to me over the years. Same. It's just they have, they have a very different business model from a lot of they the do. other clubs. Yeah, they totally um, do. And it's like, great for new comics. Like, I... Look, if you're in LA and you start doing stand up, like you're not going to keep going if if you don't have a club like Flappers that gives you some stage time yeah. because there's just like you know, they don't have like new comedy night at the Laugh Factory or the Comedy Store or the Improv or Comedy and Magic or the Ice House. Like they're why would they? They have a million headliners vying for spots. Yeah. So I also love how there's no escaping because they've got the main room. The main room is great. I love doing the main room, but they also have the Yoohoo room and it's that tiny little room off to, you know, you know that you, you know, the Yoohoo room it's like there, whatever. But I love how there's virtually no escaping that room. I fucking hate that room. Right. So yeah. like when they don't know you, that's where they put you. And then you're just um, in the middle of like every fucking wannabe actress comic thing or actor, you know, whatever going up there. And then when they know you're good, um, they still put you in the fucking you who room to close the goddamn thing out after everyone's bombed. So you're like, I, I never not only get to, everyone's not after not everyone, only everyone, everyone's bombed, but they yeah. run the light and the show has been going on for two and a half hours. And like you <laughs> then have to do 20 minutes. Well, they yes. do the check drop and stuff, and you're like, "Oh, oh my god. god, 
I but, um, fucking there was a and this is another thing too. It's so embarrassing because it's always like it, it, it is funny to me when you see like an actor going up in that room and they're like, you know, they've never done stand up before, but they like got a million credits. So everyone's sing. like, oh, my God. Yeah. But they say, yeah. And so this guy was in, an, in there with an agent from CAA. I hadn't been in the room and then I had to close it out. So I go in there to close it out. And his agent happened to look like that Canadian governor who was doing cocaine a lot at the time. So I just oh, lay you in crack. Yeah, the cra- yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Just to clarify. Yeah. Just to clarify. You're right. Sorry. I don't, I don't know my drugs. So, so, um, so they, so I just, you know, uh, I laid into him at the time or whatever. And then I was like, I'm sorry, man, like whatever. And like the audience is digging it. And I just asked him who he was or whatever. He's like, oh, I'm an agent from CAA. And I was like, great. My career is done now. Uh, <laughs> like, cause he was there to see his comedian that clearly bombed. And I was like, no, I, one I ever- feel like. I cannot imagine a CAA agent ever being in that. I felt like that was enough, bullshit too, by the way. I was like, who dragged you like into maybe like a boutique agency, but like, like my dad, <laughs> people are all CAA and I'm really close with some of them and there's no right? fucking way they'd come to that club to see me. Like, I was going to say, I'm sorry, but it's just not. Um, yeah. He maybe he was full of shit and I didn't feel so bad, but I was like, get out of here. Um, yeah, yeah. It was fucking weird. It's an interesting I'm- interesting thing i learned from i've made the mistake of hosting there before and i do look i love the people that run it they've been really good yeah. to me but like hosting Large a show night. there made me realize that there's two signs that it's a new comic one their intro is retardedly long like <laughs> like they want you to list every podcast they've been a guest on and i'm like <laughs> no where are you from like if right. that's, that's all you're getting um and Number two, they'll, well, not always, they'll ask for like a certain song to be played while they walk the seven feet to the stage. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which, oh, by the way, actually, this is kind of funny. Do you guys know Tricks? Do you know no. Tricks? No. Comedian? I don't think so. Really, really funny guy. Um, I was featuring for him and he let me choose his walk up music every night. Oh my God. <laughs> it was, uh, Sarah McLaughlin, Arms of an Angel. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> That's so great. And then um, Nickelback. <laughs> I, I, had, I, I put like more time and thought into this than I ever, ever should have. I'm just gonna grab my power cord because my laptop. No, it's fine. Is Actually, die. I just realized that you you uh, you wanted it. You had it hard out at like an hour and it's a little over <laughs> an hour. Did you want to, uh, uh, did you want to uh, plug anything and then, or what did you want to do? I'm good for a few more minutes i um okay. no the show because okay so like because of uh arizona not honoring daylight savings time which by the way i think is great like i think yeah. daylight saving time is dumb <laughs> it just made it like <laughs> super confusing because you know la and new york still changed but we didn't and now i'm like what time zone am i in and it's it's been a lot to figure out for someone like me so um yeah no it is it is a pain in the ass yeah that's interesting so only the state is not recognizing it or is it like the whole group down the middle of that time zone like pacific um, time that's a really good question i actually uh i do not know i just know that wherever i am right now did not honor it um and the whole state doesn't oh really but not yeah. all of GMT, right? No, not all. Of, I don't think all of GMT does. I'm not really. That's a good question. I'm, I'm not learning figured. something new. I'm going to be on my Google yeah. after this. So I know Polly was asking. He's like, where, so where can we see more of you too? Like what? Give us some some things. Because I know people out there want to look into you and see uh, um, like what you're doing. Well, you could start at Pornhub. No. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got one now. No, no, fuck no. I, I every mean, comedian I know to me actually, you know, it was kind of funny. Is like the pandemic hit within like three weeks. Every comic was like, check out my OnlyFans. I'm like, you guys didn't give it any time, did you? You immediately yeah. went from <laughs> uh, these jokes don't work on stage to check out my feet real quick. Uh, um, yeah, that's, <laughs> like, no I, I've been at all. fortunate that I've had a lot of writing gigs. Um, I mean, there's some stuff on YouTube. Like, unfortunately, I don't post most of my favorite bits on there just because I don't feel like dealing with. Um... <laughs> yes, it's a plug, Polly. Uh, <laughs> um, a butt Please. plug, actually. But... <laughs> <laughs> don't ruin the ending of it. Come on. Um, <clears throat> but uh... Camilla helped me pick it out. So, I mean, I really appreciate that. 
like some stuff is on on YouTube, and I whenever I have shows and stuff, depending on where you are in the country, I do I do mm-hmm. promote those on online. My website is currently down finally because someone built it for me five years ago and then disappeared, and I could never log in to change it. Like I didn't have oh, the shit. login for it, so. Um, I've got to get that back up and running. But, like literally um, disappeared, like missing persons case or like, just, you mean like they just, they just ghosted. I think they just, I don't, I don't know exactly, but okay. I couldn't get a hold of them to get the login. So, oh. I, and I think they left LA and I, I probably could have, I don't think anything happened to them, but he also, I think was feeling a little embarrassed that I paid him and then it took him like a year to do it or oh. something. And it was like one of those. Yeah. Um, but hopefully, uh, oh, someone said, where am I from? That's an essay question and I won't go too far into detail, but I did grow up in London despite this accent. This is just to piss my dad <laughs> off. Um, <laughs> so I've been here a long time, but I've, I've lived all over the U S like Chicago, New York, LA, Santa Barbara, Jackson Hole, Newport beach, uh, wow. Wow. Southern Illinois could have left that one off the list. Right. Southern wow. Illinois. Um, Holy fuck. Why? Yeah, because uh, my mom was getting remarried to someone that had a farm down there, and oh, thank shit. God that didn't work out. So, um, <laughs> <clears throat> so I moved around a, a whole lot because that's what happens when your parents get married, like on a regular basis, not to each other. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's but yeah, crazy. So that's some of my so stuff is on YouTube. Not a ton. I there's. I play a small part in a movie that's on uh, what is it on Amazon and one of the other services right now called High and Outside. Which, when I read the title, I was like, "Oh, cool, perfect! It's going to be a movie about being like high on drugs in a field." And then it turned out it's about baseball. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> wow. but that's. Uh, uh, I don't suck as a farm girl, actually, because I rode horses professionally. So I, uh, I'm very proficient on a farm, cleaning up after farm animals. And I will say, having worked in housekeeping <laughs> at a hotel, that was the worst job I ever had. I would gladly clean up after farm animals any day of the week. Humans oh, are wow. gross. Way gross, grosser. Gross, gross. Yeah. Yeah. Like a million times. That's cool. So, I did not know you grew up on a farm for a little bit or you were, you worked on a farm. That's pretty sweet. Well, my, we had a ranch, so, I mean, I lived up there by myself and looked after wow. the animals, yeah. And my dad's, like, a little <laughs> kid. He would, like, buy a new pet every few weeks, and then, like, he'd be excited <laughs> and then lose interest. So I had – that's how we wound up with an emu and an alpaca and – Oh, my God. Or, no, we had – you. I'm sure you've heard their names, John, but oh, I he, – it's, Yeah, it's but say, tell them say them anyway. I, I – I honed my craft for naming farm animals, um, which mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm really, really good at. Not to brag, wish there was more demand for it, but um, there, <laughs> we had two llamas. They were uh, Dalai Lama, kind of obvious, I know, but the, the other one was Com- Komote Lama, which is a great name. <laughs> that is a great when, name. That's cool. The guy, there are a couple guys that worked for us whose English weren't great and um it was so confusing it was beautiful like can, can you go feed como te lama and he, he'd be like me llamo juan um but uh oh and the three alpacas who were green bay paca <laughs> <laughs> over paca and fudge which my dad <laughs> Only this year figured out why that was funny. Um, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that's so, great. That is so good. Um, that's too fucking funny. Those are, those yeah, are some great been, names. That Komote oh, Llama is the best name. I feel like. Do you use that on stage? I feel like that's actually. I have occasionally like. I, I did a set in Spanish once because I. I used to be pretty fluent. Now I'm not so much, but I kind of forgot that I wasn't anymore. So I was like, fuck it, I'll try it. You know, and then <laughs> I opened with that joke, which crushed, and then everything went really far south from there. <laughs> like I was getting. I was was getting that a Mexican laughed, pun? It was, it was in Cabo. Um, and <laughs> I, 
the laughs were coming, but they were not for the right reasons. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, I also had a horse named Naked just because I, when I competed, they'd have to announce Camilla Cleese riding Naked. Uh, which I thought was, like, it's such a pretentious, obnoxiously yeah. stuck up sport that I love, you know, being able to like freak everyone out a little bit. So that's hysterical. Um, yeah. Those are but, um, go yeah, ahead. Did you, no, no, no. I was going to say, did you have a, so do you, you don't ride anymore at all though? No, like you don't miss I mean, it at I'm, all. You don't want to go back. I do, but it's also hard. Cause I, it's like, I could go ride for some of the people I used to work for and just like have fun with it. But I don't really, it's a very time consuming sport because it's not like you right. can just drive it to the tennis court and play. Like you, there's a lot that goes into it and, you um you have to like drive further away because obviously you're not going to find like a barn in west hollywood or something you know um <laughs> downey they're all over in downey as much yeah as much as i miss it like i just it's sort of easier for me to not do it at all than to like do it a little bit because i just get frustrated and like if you're not riding all the time, like there are muscles you didn't know you had until you're riding, like, and they, you, I'd get so sore and then like, right. takes three weeks to get over the soreness and then I'd go again. But like, it, it just, you know, if I ever am super successful, I'd like to do it, but it's not a cheap, cheap hobby to say the least. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could go into like yacht demolition derbies that might be more expensive, but there's mm -hmm. not much else <laughs> that's worse. So that's crazy. It's kind of nutty. Um, is, people what? asking more questions. No, I was going to say that is crazy. I, I wasn't sure if Polly had another question that we it keeps popping up, but uh -oh. um, what happened? Another door slam. So back to square so, one with so, the dog. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, as much oh, fun as awesome. this has been, I probably should jump now. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, realize that yeah, I think I keep watching the time for you because I know you got to go. I'm closing, but thank you yeah. guys so much. It's always a pleasure. And John, Absolutely. call me so I can tell you all the stories I couldn't tell. On yeah, I know. Now I got to oh, call How am I cut out of this? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll definitely give you a call this week. It'll be fun. Um, thank you so much for coming on and doing this. Yeah, this is, of course. It's a always Good a pleasure. You. Yeah. Wait, and what? Yacht demolition derby? That's not a real thing as far as I know. <laughs> I just trying to think of like, what, what could that, what could that, possibly be I... more expensive than a yacht <laughs> demolition derby <laughs> actually that would be really fun to watch though wouldn't it like right <laughs> what uh what club are you at tonight um it's like a independent venue oh my god my dad's assistant is gonna kill my dog because we have this this is actually kind of funny he somehow climbed up i don't know if you can see that whiteboard oh with all Holy his shit. appointments yeah. written on it that he just like <laughs> wiped half hysterical. the room. <laughs> I love Come that here, dog. Mother. I know he's so funny and such a troublemaker. Just stop <laughs> wriggling, you little freak! I love him. Oh my god! <laughs> um, well, cool. Well, thank you again nice so much to, for being wait, on. Nice what? to meet you, daughter of John Cleese. Be well. Thank you. My name is Camilla. <laughs> Camilla <laughs> Thanks, dude. Polly. I love. Is that a llama in that photo though, or an alpaca? It is a sheep, I think. Right? Yeah. Uh, oh sheep. yeah. It's, yeah. The, you're right. It's a sheep. The angle just, uh, it looked almost like it could have had a longer snout, like an alpaca. Anyway. Yeah. It was looking oh, yeah. llama-esque. It was. Yeah. I wish I had um, an alpaca. They're so much fun. My friend's got an alpaca farm. Yeah, and, uh, they're, unfortunately, they're, can't go visit, but. They're not super. That's why I said no spit, please. Alpacas, they spit <laughs> at you. You got to be careful. They do spit. Well, the llamas are worse. Yeah. But, really? Um, yeah. Alpacas are kind of like, what emus are to ostriches, you know, it's kind of the same uh, yeah. thing. But, but they're hyper, hypoallergenic, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know I mean? um, Tom's like, I'm thinking about buying. You want to walk me through this? She's got to go do her, she's got to go do her goddamn set. <laughs> yeah, go. I do. I have got to have a good but set. Yeah. You guys are Bye. awesome. Thanks for having me. See you later. The little See retarded much. dog is awesome. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Take care. See you later. On that Bye -bye. note, bye guys. Yeah. Dystopia tonight.